Hi, this is Dave Andrian back here at Artisan Radio. I'm here again with Dan Burney, the broker for Artisan Realty. Today we're going to talk about how to sell your house. So, uh, what are some things that sellers should look out for first and foremost? First and foremost, um, sellers should be careful to if they're going to sell their property that they really know what they're doing. It's their biggest investment that they made in their in their lifetime, and they also should be very uh, cognizant of the idea that. Uh, Selling their house, if they do it the wrong way, they could harm themselves. Uh, for example, properties uh, are metered on how long they're on the market. They could be on the market for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days. And the buyers can see this when they look at uh, properties in the MLS or Zillow or wherever a for sale by owner might put it. And if you just ask yourself this question, if there's a $200,000 house and it's been on the market for 90 days, are you going to offer $200,000? probably not. You're probably going to be thinking 180, 185. So the penalty for not selling your house quickly, uh, and there's lots of ways to make sure the house sells quickly, the penalty is pretty strong. It'll eat up a lot of your equity uh, and cause a lot of problems if your house doesn't sell quickly for the right price at the shortest period of time. Um, that's probably the biggest uh, situation that they have to be aware of. Okay. So uh, there, there's a lot of uh, for sale by owner signs going up. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Okay, so sellers who choose to uh, sell their own property, certainly within their rights, it's their property to do it. Um, but a seller who chooses to sell their own property is pretty much fixated on the commission savings that they hope to gain by selling their own property. What they sometimes might lose sight on is the final sale price, um, maybe dramatically less, maybe three, four, or five times the commission savings that they anticipate saving by selling their own property. Uh, and some of the legal issues that they might wander into accidentally because they're not licensed professional real estate agents. Um, someone who's considering selling their own property should probably keep their ears open. And what I mean by that is, uh, hey, you know, take all the steps you're going to take, uh, do your research, get as far along as you can, and then bring in another realtor to speak to him, an experienced realtor, and challenge, let him challenge you to make sure that you you're, have the kind of house that you can sell quickly. Uh, let him uh, challenge your assumptions, uh, and then after you've got information from both sides of the poll, from all that all that you could get and what a professional realtor says and says that they can do for you, uh, then make a, a, a wise, uh, intelligent decision. It's a, it's always good to know both sides of the story. But one of the mistakes someone who wants to sell their own property makes is uh, they go into hibernation. They shut down, and they know they're going to get abuse from. Uh, family members and uh, even spouses sometimes, but certainly they think they're going to get abuse from uh, from licensed realtors who would prefer to be selling their house rather than watch it become a for sale by owner, and they won't listen to the advice of uh, realtors. Realtors are perfectly happy to sit down with anyone at their kitchen table who's thinking of selling and not giving away all their internal secrets, but certainly laying out the hazards and the pluses and minuses of trying to sell it yourself. Okay. In selling your own house, I'd imagine there's a lot of issues that come in. Uh, people probably price it wrong sometimes. Right. Um, yeah, the, 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 the most important thing a, uh, a, a real estate agent can do for a seller is to price it right. Um, sellers don't recognize that they're in a very unique situation. Uh, this I'm going to be dramatic and when I say this, but you'll get the idea. A seller is the least objective person in the world about the value of their property. And why is that? Well, when they bought the property, just think about this, when the, when the sellers bought their property years before this, 30, 40, 50 people considered buying that property, but they didn't buy it. The seller bought it. Why did the seller buy it? Because they have prejudices toward this house. They like the color green. They like ranch houses. They like a driveway that wraps around the back of the house. Uh, they like a backyard. They like a big living room. Whatever the reasons that made that seller buy the house, it satisfied that seller's personal and unique needs. Now, when they bring the, sell the house to the market, they, they feel that everyone should appreciate the house the way that they appreciate it, and they're not truly listening to the market. The marketplace has its own tendencies, its own, its own things that buyers typically look for, and it may or may not be that house. Some ways to kind of explain that is that someone buys a house on a busy street. Well, the person buys a house on a busy street, they think they got a great deal, usually they're priced lower. Uh, they, they notice that their snow gets removed quicker uh, you know, by the public municipalities. Their trash gets picked up first. Uh, they can watch the world go by from their front stoop. They love that. You know, that's why they bought that house. But in fact, most people would not buy a house on a busy street because they have children who might get in traffic, 
dogs, um, you know, who might get in traffic. They, they, they like a quiet neighborhood rather than a busy street, you know, with all the traffic noises. But try to explain the person who bought the house on the busy street because they like it that most of the other people don't. You can see I'm dealing with the least objective person in the world about the value of their property. So sellers really need an outside opinion. They need someone who's tuned into the marketplace, someone who's studied the marketplace, uh, studies comparable sales, has been inside the most recent sales, someone who could do real life comparisons uh, to the property. And markets change too. In the area that we're in, we're in a seasonal market, so January through May, it's going to move really fast. A seller may or may not recognize that. If they're listing a property in June, they're about ready to go through generally the doldrums of the summer. If they're listing a property in September, they're going to go through the holiday seasons. Um, and, and that needs to be accounted for um, in, in lots of ways. It's, it's a very tricky uh, thing that an agent can do to price a property, but the penalties for overpricing the house are dramatically higher than most sellers understand. For example, if you're 5% over the market, that means your house isn't going to sell for 60, 90 days or until you make that adjustment. Even when you make the adjustment, you're chasing the market. And that extra 5%, or let's just say seven or $8,000 that you hope to get by pricing a little bit higher, uh, you're going to lose ten or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars as you chase the market again because people don't want to make a full price offer on a property that's been on the market for sixty or ninety days. The other thing is sellers seem to think that a buyer is going to come in if they like the house they're just going to make an offer, right? Uh, you know, so it's overpriced a little bit. If they like it, they'll make an offer. Then we can begin negotiations. Well, buyers don't operate that way. Um, buyers are out there comparing houses to other houses in their price point. If they're in an overpriced house. Um, the buyer who might buy in that price range is going to recognize that that house is not a $250,000 house, it's a $200,000 house, and they're not going to buy the property. If, and the buyer who's looking for the $200,000 house is going to recognize that this isn't right either, and they're not going to put their head on the chopping block and make an offer only to have it rejected. Um, that's a position that a seller uh, seems to think most buyers are willing to go out and make an offer. But most buyers want to make an offer and they're emotionally involved in that purchase of that property. So they're not going to make an offer on a house that they think there's going to be rejected or a counter offer or things like that. They'd be much happier looking for houses in their price range. If they recognize the house is priced right, they're going to be able to move forward. If they recognize it's priced too high, they're not going to be able to move forward. Even if they love the house, they're just going to stop right there and not move forward. So the first thing a seller says, um, most of the time is that we're going to price it, you're going to price it a little bit higher because we can always come down. In fact, when you when you do that, you actually come down so low that you'll actually cut off your own nose to spite your own face. It's a, it's a, it's a difficult uh, place to put yourself and your agent to when you overprice the property. Okay. So why don't you tell me a little bit, a little bit about selling a property with a realtor? Okay. Well, the way I like to understand this is that uh, there's lots of jobs involved here. And I, I break it down into lots of different segments. And if you can follow this, you might follow my reasoning here. So, um, and some jobs aren't are done by people, they're done by things. So the job of the price, as I see it, is to get people into the property. If it's priced right, people will come. The appropriate people will come into the property. If it's priced too high, less people will come. The job of the house is to make people fall in love with the house. There's nothing an agent can say or do. There's nothing a seller can say or do. Um, there's nothing that anybody could do to make someone like a house. So that's the house's job, to make someone like the property. The job of the seller is to pull themselves physically and emotionally out of the property. It's very apparent to a buyer when they walk into a house where the seller insists on being home, where the seller insists on leaving their personal collections or photographs up, that this seller has not detached from the house. And if you want to read like subtitles here, it's really saying, uh, just, I dare you to buy this house, you know, just try to take this house from me. Um, buyers pick up on that, and um, this, if the seller should pull themselves and their things out of the house, it's a lot easier uh, for the house to do its job, which is to help people fall in love with it. A good example, forget about houses for a second, think about cars. Someone wants to go and buy a car, a used car, and the seller insists on being in the car while the buyer looks at it. It's very difficult to see the car for what it is. But the second thing is the seller wants to leave his fuzzy dice and his newspaper and his cigarettes in the ashtray and whatever else, you know, leaves the sense of that seller there. It's very difficult for the buyer to see themselves and fall in love with that, that car. If the seller is out of the house, if the seller's stuff is out of the house and a buyer could kind of have a clean, fresh start in that property, then an emotional thing starts to happen. They fall in love with the property and they start placing their, their furniture in the house and their pictures, their fuzzy dice, you know, for lack of a better word. 
uh, and then the seller can make a decision. What a lot of people don't understand is they think buying a house is an analytical choice. In fact, buying a house is a 100% emotional decision. So the, the, the sellers need to set the stage for someone to be able to make an emotional decision. Uh, if you were taking someone you really like out to dinner, you set the stage by a nice restaurant, uh, dressing nicely, you know, setting the stage, maybe to propose marriage or something like that. It's the same kind of thing in a house. It's an emotional decision. Okay. Uh, the other other things, other jobs. So brochures, kind of an interesting little one here. I'll just throw it in here. Uh, a brochure is in property. It seems like a typical thing. People put a brochure for the house that's for sale. Um, but in fact, the brochure is an analytical tool which moves people away from making an emotional decision to like your property. Imagine if I was on that first date situation again and I had a brochure and I, I met somebody for the first time and I told them what they wanted to know about me before they made a decision if they're going to go on another date. I say, hey, here's, uh, here's my resume. Here's my family medical history. Here's how much money's in my 401k. Here's uh, you know, some diseases that run through our family. Here's where I live. Uh, you can see we're, we're getting off in a different direction than, than where people usually go when they make up their mind to, to, to decide to date someone or fall in love with someone. So when someone is walking into a house, the best thing is to have nothing in their hands, no information about taxes, heat types, roofs, all that kind of stuff, and let them just take the house in as it is, just like you would take me in you know, on a first date and make a decision as to whether or not you like me or like the house. You, you can see that. The job of the sign is to get people, you know, cause attention to the property. Um, the job of the realtor is very sophisticated now in 2015. The realtor has to has to do something that you're probably you're not you're not going to be able to guess what I'm about to say, but the realtor has to position your house on the internet in competition with other properties, other properties in bigger areas than your neighborhood because buyers search in bigger areas now. Buyers come to us and say, I want to live in Delaware County, maybe Montgomery County, and parts of Chester County. Um, so how do they do that? They, the, the photographs are essentially hugely important. Photographs shouldn't be too good because they'll have people be disappointed if the photographs were taken with a wide-angle lens but the rooms look a lot smaller. So the photographs have to be accurate and professional. The language has to be really smart. You would think by describing a house uh, to a T that you would actually attract the right buyer to your property. It's exactly the opposite. If you were to put, for example, stainless steel kitchen, you're probably going to turn off the other 80 or 90 percent of people looking on the internet or looking for any other type of kitchen. But a better language like modern updated kitchen will, will bring everyone home to your property. Uh, what what a seller should look for today in 2015 is an agent that's an expert, not at negotiating the sale of your house. That's what they're going to do eventually. But more importantly, at positioning your house on the internet. They want to, you want to find an expert at the internet marketing of real estate. It takes, there's some amazing stats I'll throw at you, but right now, um, a house is looked at 2,000 times before one appointment is generated on the internet. 75% of people are looking for properties, not, e not only through their desktop computer, but 75% are looking through their smartphones. So someone's going to find your house in a smartphone, make a decision based on the photographs that are, that are here and the language that's there, and the price, the three elements of making a choice right there. Uh, and then they're probably going to drive by the house, and then they're going to choose that they want to see that property, see the inside of that property. That's a completely different paradigm shift from the way people looked for houses 5, 10, 15 years ago with the newspaper ads and, and, and descriptions and, and things like that uh, being really essential. So the for sale by owner may not recognize a, that that's really what's happening when people are looking for a house. No one's going to see your sign and decide to see your house. No one's going to see your ad in the newspaper. The, the buyers are somewhere completely different, and they're reacting to a whole different new group of stimuli in order to get them to go see your property. So the job of the listing agent is to get people to go into your house. The job of the price is to get people to choose your house. The job of the sellers is to pull themselves out of the house. The listing agent should also control the environment so someone could fall in love with the house. Um, and that's pretty much it. Then you get to the point where someone's ready to make an offer. Then a whole bunch of other different jobs start, which we'll talk about in a different video. I hope this was helpful. This is Dan Bernie signing off with Dave Andrian. Have a good day.